Big Daddy by Jack Tichik. How many of you believe in evolution? We do, sir. Anyone disagree? I do, sir. You can get out of my class. After you've apologized to everyone for your rudeness and ignorance, we might let you back in. On second thought, perhaps I was a bit hasty. I think I'll systematically tear your little beliefs to shreds, shreds in front of the entire class. Thank you, sir. Sit down. What makes you think evolution is untrue? Because the Bible says that each kind... Hold it, you fanatic. I could have jailed you for that. How dare you even mention the word Bible in this school? You know it's unscientific. If you talk to me, it will only be in scientific terms. Do you understand? It's never been against the law to, to teach the Bible or creation in public schools. Young man, all the evidence is overwhelming. All of the schools teach it. It's accepted everywhere. DNA proves it. Science proves it. Carbon-14 proves it. Facts, facts, facts. Huxley, G. Gaylord, Simpson, Darwin, even National Geographic and Time magazines know it. Sir? Yes? Are there not six basic concepts of evolution? Number one, cosmic evolution. Big Bang makes hydrogen. Number two, chemical evolution. Higher elements evolve. Number three, evolution of stars and planets from gas. Number four, organic evolution. Life from rocks. Number five, macroevolution. Changes between kinds of plants and animals. Number six, microevolution. Changes within kinds. Only the last one has been observed and can it can be called science, and it's not really evolution. It's variation within a kind. I don't like your attitude. Let's discuss prehistoric man. Here is the first and most famous clue to early man, the Neanderthal skull cap. Modern dating methods show man to be older than Darwin could have imagined. Lucy, the oldest known ancestor of humans, is 2.9 million years old. Only 2.9? Richard Leakey found a normal human skull under a layer of rock dated at 212 million years. I'm sorry, sir, but most ex experts now agree that Lucy was not, was only an unusual chimpanzee, not a missing link. Will you sit down? Yes, sir. Pieced together by fragmentary fossil evidence, science can show the stages of man's long march from ape-like ancestors to safe sapiens with wonderful names like Proconsul Australopithecus, Afarensis, to Homo habilis, to Homo erectus, and on and on to modern man. Sir, I have in my possession a similar chart showing some amazing findings which are rarely made public. May I show it? This should be interesting. Yes, let's see it. Science always has the answers. Lucy, nearly all experts agree Lucy was just a three-foot-tall chimpanzee. Heidelberg man, built from a jawbone that was conceded by many to be quite human. Nebraska man, scientifically built up from one tooth, later found to be the tooth of an extinct pig. Piltdown man, the jawbone turned out to belong to a modern ape. Peking man, supposedly half a million years old, but all the evidence has disappeared. Neanderthal man. At the International Congress of Zoology in 1958, Dr. A.J.E. Cabe said his examination showed that, his, that this famous skeleton found in Germany over 50 years ago is that of an old man who suffered from arthritis. New Guinea man dates way back to 1970. This species has been found in the region just north of Australia. Crobagnon man, one of the earliest and best established fossils, is at least equal in physique and brain capacity to modern man. So what's the, what's the difference? Modern man. This genius thinks we came from a monkey. Pro professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. He's killing me. I gotta play it cool. All of these layers of the earth are millions of years different in age. We can tell the age of these layers by layers from the fossils they contain. But sir, how do you date the fossils? That's a good question. We can tell the age of the fossils since we know the age of the layer of rock where they're found. Sir, isn't that circular reasoning? How can you say the layers are different ages? 
Petrified trees are often found going through many of the layers. Some are even upside down, running through millions of years worth of rock. Well, here is proof of evolution. Human embryos have gill slits proving man evolved through the fish stage millions of years ago. Sir Ernst Haeckel made up those drawings in 1869, and they were proven to be wrong in 1874. Those folds of skin aren't gills. They grow into bones in the ear and glands in the throat. Wow, wrong for 125 years and still in our book. He's destroying me. Vestigial organs like the human tailbone proved we evolved from animals with tails. Sir, there are nine muscles that attach to the tailbone. It's not vestigial. Whales have a vestigial pelvis. This proves that they evolved from a land-dwelling creature. I'm sorry, sir, but those bones serve as anchor points for muscles. Without them, whales can't reproduce. They have nothing to do with walking on land. Even if there were vestigial organs, isn't losing something the opposite of evolution? Sir, what's the binding force of the atom? It's gluons. Gotcha. Wrong, sir. Gluons are made up or a made up dream. No one has seen or even measured them. They don't exist. It's a desperate theory to explain away truth. We know that the electrons of the atom whirl around the nucleus billions of times every millionth of a second and that the particles of the atom consists of particles called neutrons and protons. Neutrons have no electrical charge and are therefore neutral, but protons have positive charges. One law of electricity is like charges repel each other. Since all the protons in the nucleus are positively charged, they should repel each other and scatter into space. If gluons aren't the answer, what is? I, I don't know. I'm sorry, sir, but I can't hear you. I said I don't know. You tell me. Sir, may I quote from the Bible? Yes, yes, yes. It says that Christ, the Creator, is before all things, and by him all things consist, are held together. Also, it says all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Are you saying he is the Creator? Yes, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. They'll understand why I'm quitting. They're intelligent, logical, compassionate scholars. Everything will be all right. I'll simply tell them I can't teach it any longer. I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I can no longer teach evolution. It cannot possibly be true. What? Are you crazy? Get out of our university. After you've apologized to everyone for your rudeness and ignorance, we might let you back in. The man killed the creator? If Jesus is God in the flesh? Right. Jesus came to earth to shed his blood and die on the cross for you, to wash away your sins so you could have eternal life with him. Then we didn't evolve? The system has been feeding us the big lie? We really do have a soul? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What happens if I die without believing this? then you'll die in your sins and be eternally lost. What should we do to go to heaven? Repent and turn to God. Surrender your life to Christ. Acknowledge that he died for your sins and receive him as your Savior. Then you will go to heaven when you die. The Bible says there's only one way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.